Hey, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna look at how to create this scene where the phone is sort of jumping off this cushion material. So let's get started by going into Cinema 4D. And first, let's create a cube because we're gonna make that cushion. Let's do size Y, one centimeter, and let's add some segments. Something above 80 should work. Feel free to add more segments if you like. And then let's add in a fillet and do subdivision of one. Okay, so now we're gonna inflate this with the cloth tag. So press shift C to bring this up and type in cloth and add that tag in. Let's go to this tab that says balloon and add an overpressure of something around 30 to 50 and let's say it takes 10 frames to inflate to that pressure let's play that back and we get something like this to not make it blow up so much let's add in a force called friction let's add that in and let's play that back again let's also increase the strength of the force now let's try playing this back and we're still getting some collision problems so let's press ctrl d to bring the project settings go to simulation and if your pillow is falling down make sure the gravity is set to zero as you can see mine is already set to zero let's go to simulation and adjust the sub steps enter a value of three for smoothening and dampening let's keep this five also, I found that these values work best for most of my cases. I found this from one of EJ's tutorial, EJ from my design. Anyway, let's keep going. And let's try playing this back again and see how that works. It's pretty good. Okay, so there's a cool way to sort of stitch the edges. I'm gonna show that to you right now. Press C on the keyboard to make the object editable. The cube editable and let's add in this square spline and scale it down let's press middle mouse to go to the top view and adjust this that looks okay so let's go back and now we're gonna stitch the cloth along this spline so we need equal um, points on this so if we go here we can see that the intermediate points is set as adaptive let's change that to uniform and increase the number to something around 100 let's say that will give us more points on the spline so to make the connection we're gonna add a tag called connector and on the spline we're gonna add rope tag and let's go and update the slide and if we adjust the search radius you can already see that the connection is be being made with the spline that we have so we can always adjust the spline and the live update doesn't always work so you have to keep moving the search radius every time to see the connection and once that connection is done let's play it back and you can see that there is this cool stitch that has happened on the edges <coughs> let's go to the surface tab and adjust the target length a little bit to add in more folds you can also increase the bendiness more Feel free to play around with this and see what's working best for you. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep mowing. Let's create a plane, move it down a little bit, and let's press T on the keyboard to scale this up. And let's also add gravity, press Ctrl D to bring up the project settings, increase the gravity, and select the plane and let's add a collider tag. Collider tag for cloth. 
Let's add that in and play that back. Now make sure you're adding the correct tags. Now this is looking a little weird, but let's keep going. If you want to make it look exactly like a cushion, go to the surface tab and adjust those values more. Let's bring in our phone. I'm going to bring in our phone and it's nowhere to be seen because I don't know. Let's hit reset transform. Let's scale this down, move it up and let's play it back to see everything's working. Okay. It's all good. Now we're gonna rotate this phone hitting R on the keyboard, rotate this. Make sure the anchor point is in the center. So I'm gonna open up the axis center tool. If you don't find this, press shift C and search for axis center tool. And once that's centered, once that's done, we're gonna add a rigid body on this. But as you can see, this is a null and adding a rigid body on a null wouldn't calculate the mesh properly. So I'm gonna select all of this and connect and delete. So we have just one object and press Alt G on the keyboard to put this inside a null. And it's very important that the object is inside a null because we're gonna do something later. So trust me, just do it. And now let's add a rigid body on here, this one. Okay, let's play that back and you can see that it's colliding with the soft body. All right, if you want, just zoom in and make sure it's colliding properly. If it doesn't, go to the simulation in the project settings and make sure you play with those values. So mine's all good. So let's move along. And now we're gonna set the position keyframes for the null to make it bounce. So I'm just gonna start at five frames, set a keyframe, move forward, move this down a little bit. Let's move this down a little bit and set another keyframe. Now, as you can see, the position just jumped, so we might need to get rid of the rigid body. Let's move down a little bit, set another keyframe, go forward and bounce back up. Now let's get rid of that rigid body and play this back. This is the result. So let's just make sure it's intersecting properly with the cushion. So let's move this down and update those keyframes. Move it down, set another keyframe. Let's actually solo this. Let's select both and solo this so that we can adjust the animation a little bit. And let's actually, I was thinking maybe we'll add a rotation on here. So let's put, let's hit R and rotate the phone by 180 and update those keyframes. Delete that. Let's press control and drag this to duplicate it. Update that. All right. So we have something like this and then it's going back to the same rotation. I actually, let's make the rotation here. Let's change it to 360 here so that it's a full rotation. All right, that's cool. So I think we're almost there. Let's play this back and we're having that effect. Let's now add the rigid body back. Let's add that and play it back. Now a problem with the rigid body is that it doesn't, it just falls. It doesn't follow the position. So in order to do that, let's actually increase the play time a little bit more. So in order to make this 
follow the position let's go to the forces tab and make sure the follow position is set to some specific value and play that back so on the rigid body you have the forces the follow position set to 2 let's increase that to 10 so what this actually does is that it follows the position of the null or any parent layer for that matter so this is why I initially asked you to put this inside a null so that the rigid body force is following the position of the null and we get something like this so we really don't have the rotation happening if you play the spec you can see that the rotation isn't happening so let's do the same thing for this value that says follow rotation let's do a value of 8 play that back now you can see it's following the rotation as well so it's trying to copy the original rotation of that null layer that's good so I think we're there almost let's adjust the values play around with these values a little bit if you want to make this go you know more deeper into the cushion adjust the Y position and update those All right so let's play that back and see how that looks all right it's going way deeper into that cushion all right that looks cool to me so if you're satisfied with your animation i think it's time to cache the animation or the simulation so in order to do that let's go to the rigid body and go to the cache tab and you have for any of these simulations go to cache scene the entire simulation gets baked in all right cool now you can actually play this back on your timeline that's cool now if you zoom in a little bit you can see that we don't have enough segments on this pillow so if you want to go ahead and add a subdivision surface it's going to smoothen that out and that's it uh, at any point if you want to add more folds or anything before caching the scene you should probably go ahead and change those values on the surface tab of the cloth tag and that's basically it I think you can I, I, I don't think you probably need the inflating part so make sure you adjust for that in the render settings you can go here and put the output values start from say 22 I don't know so that's basically it and if this was helpful I'd highly appreciate if you leave a like and subscribe because I've been doing this for quite some time and I haven't been able to monetize any of this tutorials that I'm doing and if I need to keep things going I really need support of people like you who watched all the way till the end so thank you and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks.